All right, here we're going to be doing manual muscle testing of the rotator cuff. Very important when you're looking for any rotator cuff deficiencies, tears. It's in some of the test diving clusters. And to make sure that we're doing a detailed job of those, because those are the ones that are most likely to have tears in them or some type of patho-anatomy. There's a lot of different manual muscle testing we can do of the shoulder, particularly with the scapula, stabilizer muscles and whatnot. Um, but it's not very often I see lower trap tears. It's much more common to see a supraspinatus tear, right? So the key is to not be too aggressive early on. I remember one patient I had that, you know, there was a surgeon that was testing their shoulder and they felt it give and they felt it pop. And the surgeon was like, well, if it wasn't torn before, it is now. Don't let that be your patient. Um, it's kind of funny now, but the, the patient wasn't all too happy with that, as you can imagine. Um, I mean, it was already fragile. It's not going to do it to normal healthy, but we're testing people that are typically have some type of problem there. Um, I like to do internal rotation testing first. I'll show you on this side for this one. I like to make sure I have one hand at the elbow and I'm going to be pushing in. So I, I show them the motion. I'm going to be trying to pull out like this. Don't let me. And then I'll do a little bit. Depends on how irritable they are. Now, if they tell me, you know, I go to the gym and I'm lifting 200 pounds and it gets irritable the next day, you can crank on this thing pretty well. They say, every time I go up to reach like that, it hurts. You probably don't want to crank on that really quick. And so I want to say, don't let me pull out. Rest. That was not maximal. Okay, is that all right? And maybe I'll do all of them. If I'm more confident that they won't be too early, I'll go again. And then if I really want to, I'm going to push. And I'm really going to pull on that. And I want to know that it's solid there. External rotation, I also I will do that one second. This one needs to be done very detailed because depending on the angle of rotation and abduction changes how the muscles are working here. So a lot of times, if you say, put your arm like this, people will often bring their arm too far back. So you want it to be a little bit forward. If they bring it too far back, and I say push, and then you're hitting their stomach, you're like, well, I'm not really sure what that was. I don't know why this isn't going well. I'm just going to go on and say it was a three plus. And you basically did a bad job testing. You don't know what you're looking at. So make sure we get a good job. So I like to put my hand right here, and I'm going to be pulling out. So I'm like, so I'd say, Logan, I'm going to try to rotate. Don't, just let me do it here. So I'm going to rotate your arm like this, but you're going to try not to let me, okay? And so then I'm going to push. Rest. Now it's submaximal. If that felt all right, then I'm going to push even more. And I want to know if there's pain. Do they have to dip in and then they can do it? Sometimes I'll get it to where I push, and then they'll be strong right there, but they've got nothing out here. That's really good to note right there. The next one is the supraspinatus. I like to have them hold it right here and they've probably already done an active range of motion exam where they've come in and said, hey, every time I go like this, it hurts. Or I reach out like this, it hurts. If that's the case, let's see how that feels. Normally, it's going to be painful with some pressure with that. If they're low irritability, I want to find out. I'll start above the elbow here at first. Don't let me push there. And say that was all right because then I can have an idea. Do they drop immediately and everything else was trying to, you know, they're getting all right with this and even though a little painful? Or, yeah, it was just a little bit painful. If I'm really trying to be aggressive and find out, I'm going to come out here. And I'm, again, I'm going to slowly push. I'm going to slowly build up there. But if they're doing all right, I'm going to push harder and harder. If I'm worried that it may, you know, I'm going to go like that. I'm going to push, and then I can grab it to kind of bring it out of that. So that way, they're, you know, they're not just having that rebound effect. You want to be push, 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 push. And then have them shoot up. So, you know, as you're pushing hard, then let up a little bit. You can even hold if needed, especially just go slowly with it. You don't want to just let it spring up there. But we want to be aggressive with that one. Um, if we're aggressive with all those, we can have a really good idea of any rotator cuff issues. Um, whether it be, now it is, it's difficult to know whether it's going to be a tendinopathy, whether it's pain, or whether it's a tear. But this also gives us good testing in the future. If they're weak one day and the next day they come back really strong, it probably wasn't a tear. So it just builds off of our data because it's very difficult to know just from the research out there what all of these mean. 
but it starts to build up your own personal repertoire, no matter what, it is good retest things that we can do. If they start to feel better, everything's got stronger, but they still have one motion that doesn't move at all, that's something that's good to know. That could mean some pathoanatomy. And pathoanatomy is good to know for prognosis. That doesn't mean we have to go MRI or ultrasound everybody to find out what it is, but it also gives you an idea. If they're doing pretty well, but they're still really weak in one area, they probably shouldn't be doing something really heavy really fast. There's a greater chance that we could have a problem with something like that. So be detailed, work on the clinical reasoning, and then progress it from there.